Yo, what's going on guys? Try back again here bringing another video. This one's going to be doing a career in review for Quentin Rampage Jackson. I thought it'd be a good idea since he's fighting Ryan Bader this weekend uh, in Japan. Should be an exciting fight. Definitely picking Quentin to win that one. That should be um, a hand-picked choice for Quentin, uh, Ryan Bader. I believe truly that they hand-picked him because they felt like this is a guy that Quentin can, you know, knock the shit out of, you know, in Japan in front of all the Japanese fans. And I, I really believe that's what the, why they decided to pick Ryan Bader. Nothing against Ryan Bader, but it just seems to me like he is the perfect guy for Quentin to knock out. You know, his takedowns are not that good, and his stand-up is not that good. So, And he's not that fast. So he might not be able to avoid, you know, Rampage's uh, uh, hooks, man. So it should be an exciting fight this weekend. But uh, I just thought it was a good time. We'll do uh, we'll do a career interview for Rampage. So obviously, uh, it'll be nice to see him back in Japan. You know, uh, his old old school days and pride and him getting started over there. I remember seeing Rampage. Uh, just seeing him come out. You know, the first time I think I saw him was probably it was definitely in Pride. Uh, let's see here. Um, Probably, I think it was around the time that uh, he beat uh, Kevin Randleman. Um, yeah, Kevin Randleman. So, I remember uh, watching him against uh, Kevin Randleman. And Kevin Randleman's a huge guy, just an absolute monster. And uh, Rampage KO'd him, absolutely KO'd him. Uh, that was a very, very uh, exciting fight back in Pride back in the day. Um, and, you know... At that time, Quentin was like 16 and three. He did lose a, a couple. He had a there was a disqualification loss when he needed a guy in the groin. Uh, Matsu, the guy's name was uh, Sakuraba, did beat him. There was some controversy about the fight between uh, Quentin and Sakuraba because Quentin admitted in an interview that uh, Pride uh, tried to pay him off to go to sleep against Sakuraba, and uh, apparently Quentin turned him down, but he still lost the fight. Uh, he turned down the bribe apparently to to you know to throw the fight basically. He he did lose though, and a lot of people are you know even to this day are a little bit iffy about you know did Quentin actually throw the fight? You know he's saying this, but you know because he did get submitted by him. Me personally, I think that uh, Sakuraba back in the day was good man. He was good. You know he wasn't able to beat Vanderlei, but. He beat the Gracies. I mean, his submission skills and his wrestling was serious, man. So, you know, I, I think he probably did just straight up beat Quentin. I mean, Quentin used to throw those slams on guys, you know, like slam page. Pick him up over his head and power bomb slams and all kinds of crazy stuff just for the fans. And, um, I mean, doing slams like that's going to tire you out. You pick a guy up like that and drop him or slam him, that's going to make you really tired, man. No question about it. So, you know, he did slam Sakuraba a couple times, and then right after that he got he got submitted by him. Some of these earlier fights I, I don't remember too well. I remember the one against Randleman, uh, Bustamante, a lot of these other ones, knocking guys out. Where I really took notice of uh, Rampage and really took like started to take him seriously, like this guy is no joke, was when he beat, uh, he beat Chuck Liddell. And they actually threw in the towel in this fight, which is something that nowadays, do we see guys throwing the towel? Like, I have not seen... A fighter throw in the towel since I think BJ Penn against George St. Pierre. Like it's been a long time since the guy's thrown in the towel. It almost never happens. But yeah, they threw in the towel corner stoppage. Um, Chuck was getting his ass whooped. And this one was funny because Dana White uh, bet the owner of Pride a hundred and fifty thousand dollars that Chuck Liddell was going to win the tournament, the um, Pride Conflict uh, 2003 um, Middleweight Grand Prix, which is actually like a, a light heavyweight Grand Prix. And the funny thing is, is Chuck was thought to be the best in the world by a lot of people. He didn't even make it to the finals. He lost to Rampage in the semifinals, which just kind of showed that Chuck Liddell, even in the UFC, even though in the UFC he was the best, he was never actually the best in the world. I've said this in a lot of videos when I talk about Chuck and that kind of stuff. At no point in Chuck's career was he the best fighter at light heavyweight. At no point. When he was the UFC uh, light heavyweight champion, when he beat uh, Randy Couture and everyone thought he was the best, he wasn't. In Pride, Rampage was sitting there being like, I'll whoop this guy's ass. And you know what proves it is that this wasn't fluky, is that when Rampage came in the UFC later on, he knocked out Chuck Liddell again. This time it was even cleaner, cleaner knockout. One of the most famous knockouts of all time when Rampage knocked out Chuck in the UFC. Uh, you know, so 
really when you look at it, you know, I'll have to do a video career interview for Chuck, but it's not going to be that positive because even though Chuck was thought to be so good and a champion and all this stuff, he was never the best. He was never even close to the best. When he went over there, I mean, he barely got by a young Alistair Overeem, and then he fought Rampage and Rampage, put a whooping on him, something awful, was taking him down, was beating him in the stand-up. I mean, Rampage was a monster. Then he then he fought uh, Vanderlei Silva. So, you know, he got into these fights. Um, twice he fought Vanderlei in Pride. Um, and, you know, Vanderlei is just, in Pride, he was a destroyer, man, just an absolute destroyer. He was probably uh, the best in the world in uh, at that time. Um, it's hard to say whether or not if one of the wrestlers from the UFC would have been able to beat him, like Tito or Chuck or anybody like that. I don't know if they would have, but there might have been the type of situation where there were so many good guys at light heavyweight, maybe there was not a single best guy. Because if you had them all match up, someone, you know, like Round Robin, someone would lose to someone else. There, No guy would go undefeated in light heavyweight, you know, because let's look at this right now. Tito Ortiz would beat Vanderlei, or at least he did before. Uh, I'm not sure if he would again. Maybe maybe Vanderlei would have the best chance of any of them as being the number one. But Tito may beat Vanderlei, okay? Chuck may beat Vanderlei, maybe. Um, probably not, but there's a possibility. Rampage can't beat Vanderlei, okay? But Chuck can't beat Rampage, okay? Tito can't beat Chuck, all right? And Tito and Rampage won't fight each other because they're buddies. But if they did, I, I think I'd have to pick Rampage probably. So when you look at it, and, and Randy Couture is in there somewhere, I think Randy would probably beat Vanderlei. So you put all these guys in, and you don't have a best guy. You just have a bunch of like six guys that, you know, one of them can beat a bunch of the others, but then there's, you know, one guy they can't beat, and he can beat most of his, but he can't. So interesting, interesting stuff at that time. There was just so many good guys at light heavyweight, more than there is now. Well, well, I shouldn't say that, but now we have the, you know, a clear uh, John Jones is clearly ahead of the rest of the pack. But until now, there hasn't been one because there's, a, you know, switching around so much. So, yeah, so I remember those uh, those knee uh, TKOs uh, from Quentin. I remember the one where uh, Vanderlei laid him out in the uh, on the ropes, man, with the knee. Um, or was that uh, Shogun? I forget, but man, you know, like uh, Shogun beat Rampage too, you know, and um, Rampage was so good. He was just like a little bit, you know, under. The thing was, was a lot of guys in Pride were on steroids, so I'm pretty sure Vanderlei was taking some. I mean, when you look at his physique in Pride versus in the UFC, both before and after, when he left the UFC, he became stronger, bulkier, more muscular. And then when he came back in the UFC, he ended up cutting down weight because he couldn't keep up his strength. Uh, it could have been age, but it could also have been juice because in Japan, you can, you know, there's no commissions over there. You do whatever you want. If you want to take juice, go take juice. Ken Shamrock has said many times that, that he took it. No problem. Never had a problem in Japan fighting. Uh, a lot of other guys, too. Same thing. They were on juice. Uh, Coleman, uh, the Hammer House, uh, Randleman, they were, you know, all of them were on juice. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe that had something to do with Vanderlei beating uh, beating Quentin because that was a, that was like, that's a power fight. You know what I mean? Both guys are throwing hard. And uh, whoever lands first or whoever lands on the chin is going to win, basically. Um, Quinton did uh, avenge those two losses with a beautiful knockout on the UFC against Vanderlei later on, which was really nice to see. But it was it was always really exciting and pride to watch Quinton fight when he was slamming guys. Um, you know, that was just awesome. And I wish we could see him do that again, you know, win, lose, or draw, you know, start slamming guys and doing all this kind of stuff because his knockout of uh, Ricardo Arona, <laughs> where is that at? Was that early career or later on? Um, was it Ricardo Arona? Let me just check here one sec. Yep, Ricardo Arona. KO from a slam. This is, it's so rare to see a guy get knocked out from a slam. But if you guys have not seen the Ricardo Arona knockout, um, Quentin knocking him out from the powerbomb, he literally power bombs Ricardo Arona. Literally, like, you know, in the WWE, you see guys get power bombed and stuff like that. He does it for real, though. You know what I mean? Like, he lifts him up, way up his back, his arch like that, and then, boom, he lays him flat out, knocks him right out from the slam on the head. Just unbelievable slam from uh, Rampage, man. Comes out with the chains, and, you know, and he's doing the uh, the dog thing. That's, you know, the, the howling and stuff. That's, that's cool, man. Good stuff. So, yeah, definitely Rampage, ever the exciting fighter. Going on from that, um, geez, yeah. Wanderlei Silva losing there, losing to Shogun when Shogun was, I mean, soccer kicks in this one. So Shogun got guys down and 
you know, in Pride, you're allowed to soccer kick. So he's soccer kicking, quitting and stuff, man. Oh, brutal stuff. Soccer kicks to the head, man, in Pride. Just crazy stuff. That shit would never fly in the States. But just would, you know, never fly again. And uh, any athletic commission would not allow that to happen. That's for sure. So very exciting. Going on from there, let's see who else he beat. Some guys, like, I just don't remember a lot of these guys from Pride. Matt Lindland, he got a decision against him. Marvin Eastman. Okay, so here he makes his entrance in the UFC. He fights Marvin Eastman. This was a beautiful knockout. And then Chuck Liddell, another gorgeous knockout. Beat Chuck twice now. And then he won a decision against Dan Henderson. Okay, pretty much putting him in the position that he was the most dominant uh, champion up until uh, John Jones when he defended his UFC title, unified title with Pride and UFC, and defended it a couple times, or well, at least defended it once. And then he, quote-unquote, lost it to Forrest Griffin. This is one I can talk about for hours, man. I watched this fight several times, and I can't see how they gave this fight to Forrest. I just can't see it. It was a horrible decision. You know, to, to be the champion, you have to beat the champion. And Forrest did not do that any of those times. Right after this, this was when uh, Quentin went into a dark time, and he uh, apparently uh, got into a car accident, had delirium, and all kinds of different stuff. You can look up all that stuff, and apparently... There was there's rumors, it was reported that lady was praying and he hit her car and she had a miscarriage. I don't know if I believe that. You know, the media has a, a tendency to blow things out of proportion. I don't necessarily know if that's uh, you know true for sure. Uh, I think generally Quentin's a good guy, but he got royally screwed over here against uh, Forrest. Forrest did not win that fight. Forrest should have never been light heavyweight champion. I mean, he just they he, that was a gimme. They gave him that fight even though he did not win it. Then the beautiful KO against uh, Vanderlei Silva, where he, you know what I mean, uses, uh, he blocked, I think, Van a couple of Vanderlei's punches and landed. I forget if it was a right hook or a left hook. Knockout of the night. Just a gorgeous knockout, man. Absolutely crazy. Came back at it. Um, had a fight of the night against Keith Jardine and won it in the decision. And then this is where he went away to do the A team. Uh, which I haven't seen. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, I definitely should check it out for sure because I, I like Rampage a lot. I'm a big fan of Rampage. He's a he's a really funny guy and you know interviews and stuff and uh, he's an exciting fighter, man. You know, win, lose, or draw, he comes to fight. He lost to Rashad Evans, which was a really lackluster fight because Rashad just wanted to hug the whole time. Um, but he almost knocked out Rashad. He was so close, he almost did it. He just missed him. He just a little bit too much emotion, just, you know, instead of just being careful when he had him down and picking his shots with ground and pound and, and knocking Rashad out, he just, I think he got a little bit too emotional just wanting to knock him out, and he started throwing too powerful, and he should have just eased up a little bit, you know, throwing a little bit softer punches down at him, and he probably could have gotten a knockout, but, man, it was it was a close one. I was I was rude for Rampage. I definitely wanted to see him knock out Rashad because after the, uh, the ultimate fire and stuff, you know, they had a huge, um, you know, uh, rivalry between the two of them and then in um leota machida this is a fight i got to see myself actually uh he chased machida around the the, uh, the cage like <laughs> every round won a decision deserved it should have won that decision um definitely and uh you know that's that might be the highest point showing that he was able to beat leota because leota was a champion and undefeated and was huge for so many years you know he was supposed to be the next big thing and uh for rampage to beat him is Big man. I mean, that puts Rampage right up at the top. He beat Matt Hamill, which was, uh, you know, not the greatest fight, but, you know, I mean, you can't get a knockout every time, you know, like even with in Japan, you don't know for sure if he's going to knock out Vader. I mean, we'd like to see it, but we can't say for sure that he's going to be able to do it. I mean, there's really no way to know. Um, going on from there, lost to John Jones, put on a pretty good fight, did the best he could, made it all the way to round four, and then got. Uh, Ended up uh, getting submitted to uh, to John, but he definitely did uh, did a good job. He definitely um, you know got further than anybody else has gotten against John, and was close a couple times. Almost had him. Almost landed one of those bombs. Has a record now of 32 and nine. Probably soon against Bader will be 33 and nine. So that's an impressive, impressive record. Quinton is thought of as uh, you know just like another another fighter, but he's really not. When you look at it, and like I mentioned with the Chuck thing before. After Vanderlei fizzled out there, Quinton was the next guy to be, you know, dominant at light heavyweight, even if it was just one. Well, the thing was, was that because of the Forrest Griffin screw up in the decision, really, he would have defended his title probably a few times, three or four in a row with winning. Um, but 
due to the Forrest Griffin thing, he ended up, you know, getting a bad decision. And uh, obviously, you know, he was pissed about that and had personal problems as a result of it. Um, anyway, I, I love watching Quentin fight. He's one of the most exciting fighters the sport has ever seen. In his youth, um, you know, in pride and stuff, when he used to come out wearing the uh, the uh, Apollo Creed. Was it Apollo Creed from Rocky? I think so. Uh, American uh, shorts, the, the boxing shorts. And slam guys, that was, that was just so cool, man. I'd like to see a little bit more slam page again. A little bit more of that craziness but um, you know as the guys get older their cardio and stuff it's not as good as it used to be when they're younger so you know uh, maybe the reason why he doesn't do it is because he can't keep it up anymore like he used to be able to the test isn't there you know the average uh, man's um, um, peak athletic period is 23 and after that it, it uh, your hormones and everything fizzle down year after year after year after year after year and they get you know as you go on through life get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse so your athleticism you know declines after 23 um, so you know I don't know if we'll ever see slam page again you know slamming guys I certainly would like to um, but you know I just I just don't know what's gonna happen but definitely uh, you know he's he's obviously one of the best boxers in light heavyweight division um, power puncher man knocks guys out like crazy um, great slams, great takedown defense, which I think we'll see against Bader big time. Um, good head movement when he's boxing, covers up well. Um, you know, not great at checking kicks, which is one thing. But, you know, um, he's focusing. He's like, he, tra he trains a wolf slayer, so he's more of like a straight MMA boxer than he is really a complete fighter, which is why I think he had so many problems with um, Vanderlei and Shogun and these other guys. If he'd have trained a little bit more, uh, not just boxing, but Muay Thai maybe, specialized in boxing, but maybe if he trained a little bit more Muay Thai, he'd be better at blocking the kicks, checking kicks and, you know, uh, blocking knees and things like that because, uh, you know, that cost him early on. I think now he's figured it out and he's pretty much ready to go. Um Definitely one of the most exciting fighters in the history of the sport. One of the most dominant uh, light heavyweight fighters we've had since, since you know, before John Jones up to uh, to Vanderlei. Um, man, the Pride decade was so much fun and, you know, definitely one of the best fighters, Quentin Rampage Jackson. So that's it for this career interview, guys. Uh, not sure how I'm going to do next. I guess I'll just play it by ear and see how it goes. Later, guys. Peace.